do pound through it. I really do enjoy my beer on the show. Oh, yeah. But I, I better get this uh, show on the road. Um, so um, welcome to the Pagey Train. I'd like to welcome to the studio uh, Goche Akichos. Achikos. Achikos. That's so good. close. Very good. Um, filmmaker, director, writer, and um, owner-operator of Peacock Productions. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, I must say, uh, just before we get started, I, I, I've been, um, I've, you know, because I follow a lot of people online, and um, you're just so productive. You're always working. And I think it's just really inspiring. So that's, that's why I wanted to have you on the show today. Thank you. Yeah. I like to work. You do, um, yeah. but you you also do photography as well. Yeah, I do photography. Mm-hmm. Um, as a filmmaker, you need to know how to take professional photo. Mm-hmm. And when you study, um, actually they teach you first how to take professional photo. Mm-hmm. Then uh, you forward to learn how to um, make a film or professional video. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So basically, uh, we learn first taking photo, Mm -hmm. then filmmaking. Actually, it's kind of bridge. Mm -hmm. This is what I think about photography. Mm -hmm. If you are a filmmaker, you definitely know how to take photo. Yeah, I think so. Um, um, I think before I studied film, I was always the one to take the photograph because I could see the image in the image, the, um, uh, the almost the mise en scene, if you will. Yeah. Um, the, you know, the, the story within the story. And I think um, the art of a good photograph is to be able to tell the most story you can in one single frame. Yeah, and sometimes it is really hard to take a photograph mm-hmm. and uh, put all your composition in one single uh, scene mm-hmm. harder than sometimes a, a video composition mm. yeah and for me sometimes um, actually a bit boring mm-hmm. because videography is much more excited for me because, yeah, me too. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of characters more stories mm-hmm. and motion pictures mm-hmm. yeah it's make me more excited actually I always say that this uh, this true to my students here mm. in Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I um I think um telling a story as a filmmaker is something that blossoms in you and as a, as a voice. I I found it a, um like cuz you can learn the tools of how to take a photograph or you can learn the tools of how to be a videographer. Um but it's you that's just a skill to do. I think the real um talent behind it is how to become a storyteller, how to put these images together to make it make sense or to invoke an idea into an audience member or have that intention. I think we all, I, like I've talked about this before. I suffer the death of the author all the time. I, I make a, I make a, um, a piece of art and I might have an intention for it, but that doesn't mean how that's how it's going to be received by an audience person. Do you, do you ever find that sort of thing when you're making art? Yeah. Um, but storytelling is really important part, mm-hmm. uh, being a filmmaker. Um, and, uh, firstly, like, you really need to know um, how to build the story with your characters. Um, so this also sometimes uh, I, I don't think like the way how you think, but uh, that's that's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I think um, but that's the, that's the um, the art of putting it together. Do you do a lot of editing? No. No. No, because um, editing is boring for me Mm -hmm. Um, I mostly work with other editors Mm -hmm. um, time to time Uh, but I do also editing Mm -hmm. yeah do you do the um because I notice you have a lot of promotional material out there you 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 do um behind the scenes a lot yeah uh, um uh, which is I think is a very smart idea we were talking about this off air um earlier is about there's two parts of being a filmmaker you have to be that storyteller yeah. um, but you also have to have a bit of um, um business ideas on how to run a business and I think uh, my advice to a lot of people is always make the behind the scenes content because mm-hmm. people will watch it they yeah. want to see what's behind the curtain um uh, do you edit most of those pieces together yeah yeah i do edit this and um sometimes people are really curious about this behind the scenes mm-hmm. and sometimes they are really more interested to see the behind the scenes more than the real um <laughs> project so mm-hmm. um, i experience this a lot <laughs> yeah and also um i i do use this for ad- advertisement mm-hmm. uh, for my projects 
and an easy way to reach other people mm -hmm. uh, who want to work with me. Yeah, I think it's very smart. It's a very smart thing to do. Yeah. Um, and because people, um, especially on social media, people like to look and have, um, uh, you know, to be a bit of a voyeurist and to, to look out at, uh, for things. Like people see content all the time, but what they don't get to see a lot of is how that content's made. Uh, I think even on the weekend you were on a shoot, I saw you, you were shooting something on a smartphone with a gimbal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah what was that little project? Because that was, was that was a commercial project or because you were filming a dog? With yeah. the sunglasses on? <laughs> it's just a character, one of character. Um, it was a promotional video clip of a mobile bar. Mm -hmm. And they like to uh, produce this video clip on Instagram mm -hmm. and uh, their YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. um, and I work with iPhone Pro 11. Mm -hmm. And I use um, Gimbal. Mm -hmm. It was really easy. Sometimes mm -hmm. I do produce uh, using those... Um, iPhone and the uh, gear mm -hmm. uh, with iPhone. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's make the things easier mm -hmm. and uh, I save time. Mm -hmm. And uh, also people um, like to see the result after we shoot. Mm -hmm. So if I use much more professional gears like camera and um, uh, also different location with all this camera lighting, uh, it will take more time to edit all these things together. Mm -hmm. But with iPhone and uh, other things, is much more easier. Sometimes, um, sometimes better <laughs> for this kind of commercial stuff. Yeah, for the commercial stuff. Yeah, yeah I tend to agree. Um, I think sometimes um, I, when it's you, you remember when phones started changing, mm -hmm. where they started to become really good. Like when you you see a digital image on a phone, you're like, that's only suitable for a screen you know, yeah. as big as your thumbnail. But now, you, you know, especially because um, I've got the iPhone 11 as well, I'm just amazed at how much you can do with it. Yeah. From um, I even use it for astrophotography. Like I plug it into a telescope to photograph planets. Yeah. And that's how powerful that phone is. Um, so why don't we use this uh, phone? And well, you know, white balance, you don't have to white balance it. You don't have to, like, and focusing, and it has an amazing, they have amazing autofocus. Like, um, I don't know, it's when I started out as a filmmaker, your most devastating moment is when you've shot something perfectly and it's a little bit soft. It's a little bit, you know, fuzzy. It's got a bit of that Gaussian blur on it. And you're like, I've just ruined this shot by one attribute. But I think with the, with the phone, these worries tend to sort of um, peel away. Yeah, it's like looks like much more mirror image, mm. and people like to see the pictures, um, the brightness pictures, mm -hmm. like bright pi pictures. So mm -hmm. it is easy to capture these scenes by uh, using iPhone, mm -hmm. and uh, also people are really interested to use that kind of phones by themselves. Mm -hmm. And then they are coming to ask me to teach them how to use their iPhone and uh, how to edit this image mm -hmm. by using on their phone. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes it is uh, necessary to learn uh, how to use the phone <laughs> that you have. <laughs> yeah, well, when I was, because um, uh, I used to do um, sort of, um, not tutorials, but workshops uh, for a university and using different cameras and different um, capture techniques. Mm -hmm. And the iPhone 4 was out at the time. So I was um, given the task to shoot and edit and publish a, um, a video from just a phone. And I remember editing on an iPhone 4 Mm -hmm. which was very clunky and difficult. Yeah. Uh, very time-consuming as opposed to going into, like, um, uh, Final Cut or Premiere Pro, something like that. And uh, well, at the time, I think it was um, Final Cut 7 what is what I was using back then. Um, I think I'm showing my editing age there. Um, but, um, yeah, um, editing on a phone from iPhone 4 to iPhone 11 is, a, is night and day, I think. You can do it so much easier. Yes. Um, and it's more accessible. And I think that's the thing that's attractive to young people and students is they have this power in their pocket, um, yeah, yeah. this amazing power um, uh, to show images. And it, look, even from a perspective of what we're going through at the moment, um, you know, with, um, you know, um, the, you know um, civil rights movements at the moment, this is all done because of images from a phone. Yeah. So this is the power that this device has. Yeah, let's use this power yeah. for future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And use it for good. I like the idea of, um, you know, creating um, 
you know, good things and, and shooting to make something rather than destroy it. Yes. And I, I hate seeing things um, used in, um, you know, for propaganda purposes. And uh, well, the, the irony is that film actually come out of a propaganda machine. That's where it was born. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's why they call it production, pre-production. It has very military... Um, uh, terminology in in film, you know, yeah. you, you know, um, they call it shooting, uh, or they call it, you know, they call action. There's all these very, you know, um, warlike um, terminologies that There's go something in. Something's different that um, you think. I never thought something's like that. Mm -hmm. It's a different uh, perspective. Mm. Yeah, I will think about it <laughs> more <laughs> later. <laughs> But um, yeah. Uh, It's kind of a big preparation for uh, some things which is real, mm -hmm. but it is like uh, not happening at the moment mm. or will happen in future. Mm. Like can, uh, we are just preparing for some things mm -hmm. which is real, but not happening at the moment, but mm -hmm. also it is happening at the moment mm -hmm. for future. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is maybe kind of war. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, uh, art war. <laughs> yeah, the war, uh, yeah, um, war of the arts. War um, of the arts. Yeah, I like. I, I, wow, I, we've just coined um, a, a terminology here today. How fantastic! Yeah. Um, but uh, look, as I said, I was I, I've been looking at your content online um, with admiration. Um, you've worked overseas extensively. Um, I, I think one thing I was looking at was the, um, I think it was called the um, art laboratory. Um, yeah. Can you tell us about the art laboratory? Um. I was 21 uh, when I found Art Laboratory mm -hmm. in Turkey after I graduated um, my filmmaking school mm -hmm. in Turkey. I just um, realized I need to do something more for my uh, future projects, artistic projects. Mm -hmm. Then I uh, collect people, collapse the artist mm -hmm. with me, then I... Uh, found this laboratory then I just uh, run the project on art laboratory mm -hmm. I teach I give workshops mm -hmm. uh, about theater performance mm -hmm. also filmmaking videography mm -hmm. and it's really um, it was really really uh, grateful time for me because I learned a lot mm -hmm. I learned a lot by teaching by creating with others It was really nice time. Mm -hmm. Then I uh, went to European countries. I continued to give the artistic workshops there mm -hmm. about acting, filmmaking, secret writings. Yeah, uh, now it is continuing in another part of the world here in Australia. Yeah, wow. I think um, that's amazing. Um, and what, how, how, how awesome to go to different countries and just do film and then and, and, um, pass on your knowledge uh, to people yeah. on how to do film. I think it's great. I've always um, dreamt of doing workshops. I've done some, some workshops, but for an organization, never on my um, um, sort of own um, accord. And sometimes I've thought about that um, because I, I think teaching is powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Teaching, I find, when I want to hone in on a skill, teaching someone, it, it, it increases your skill as well. It's not just about giving someone knowledge. It enhances you because then you have to go over mm -hmm. what you've learnt and you solidify that knowledge. Um, and so I, I really, and I, I, as well, I think it's always a buzz to, to light a fire under someone young and show them how to be a storyteller and show them how to use a camera because then that you unlock something in them and it gives them this power this tool and I, i'd like to see them go out into the world and and uh and do well um you guys know who you're out there every time you see me you owe me a beer by the way <laughs> uh, <laughs> um no made a few editors made a few cameramen um it's it's certainly a great feeling yeah. um but you're making a, what was the um your current project is um named close to your production company peacock Yeah, my latest movie mm -hmm. made in Poland, 2017, mm -hmm. Peacock. Yeah, and um, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what Peacock is, or we have we, we can't go into that yet. Yeah, we can go. We can, we can. <laughs> we can. we oh, are great. free to go with P Peacock, <laughs> <laughs> because um, I think a week ago or two weeks ago, I made an online premiere for Peacock. Mm -hmm. It was not published. Mm -hmm. 
and two weeks ago now it is published on YouTube. Oh, so you've recently just published it? Yes. Oh, fantastic. After three years. Oh, wow. Yeah, I keep it for three years because it was just going to other festivals mm -hmm. around the world. And now um, everybody can watch the peacock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell you about peacock. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, okay. Well, let's go back to the start. So um, uh, what, what inspired you to make this film? Uh, my life and my mm, perspective of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because when I watch the movie now, it is more meaningful for me. Mm -hmm. When I was making uh, Peacock, um, it was also meaningful, but now it is more meaningful because um, now I understand more what am I telling in that movie. Mm. But three years ago or five years ago, when I just wrote the story, um, 2014, mm -hmm. I wrote the story. And 2016, 2017, I realized the movie. Mm. Now, 2020, when I back to watch the movie, I learn more. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, from the movie, from the uh, story, also about the subject that I am discussing with mm -hmm. uh, with people who is acting mm -hmm. like because they are the um, characters mm -hmm. on the uh, storyline mm -hmm. and they are telling some things using my words mm -hmm. using my imagination mm -hmm. and uh, when I look at them again and again mm -hmm. I learn more yeah, because there's a piece of you, yeah. and you've got them to because you've written this story. Because I've I've had this experience as well as a um, um, a writer director. Um, I think the hardest thing to do is to write a story. Like, yes, it's the hardest part. Once you've written it, it starts to come to light. Yeah. Um. Then you start producing it. Start auditioning actors, and all of a sudden, um, I start finding at the um um. You know, when at, you know, at the audition stage, you start to hear your words come to life. You get to start to see your words come to life. And when you're shooting, you're, you're then watching a camera take these images and this performance bringing your words to life. Yeah, it's like a baby that mm -hmm. you, uh, you have it mm -hmm. with you. Because uh, in that time, I just told uh, to my mother, this mm -hmm. is my baby, mm -hmm. will born with me. So... Um, yeah, as an artist, uh, sometimes it is not easy to explain what you have in your mind. Mm. Using the screen, using filmmaking tools, mm -hmm. sometimes it is not also enough. You need to put something more. Mm -hmm. So I always try to put something more. This is why I like experiment. Mm. And the Peacock movie is an experimental movie. Mm. One master shot, 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, 23 actors mm -hmm. and uh, all the people behind the scene is totally more than 60. Mm. Wow, uh, so you're looking at like an almost a hundred person production for how long? Uh, Two minutes? <laughs> 13. 13 minutes? 13. About wow. one master shot. Yeah, okay. Yeah. One master shot, okay. Uh, so, like a continuous master? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should watch the movie. I should watch this film. Of course. Yeah, no, I'll totally be watching it. And, and guys, don't forget to go and check out this film at uh, Pe uh, Peacock, Peacock. Pro Productions on YouTube. Yes, Peacock Film Productions yeah. on YouTube. They can find that. Yeah, um, 13 minutes of a continuous uh, master shot. Yeah. Uh, and you've obviously cut in other shots, or is it just one um, continuous? No, one continuous, no cut. Wow. Yeah. I, that, that's a long, continuous shot. Very long one. <laughs> the longest I've done is about a minute, I think. And that's usually a conveyance shot, you know, when you're following a character into yeah. a different rooms, and you may then pivot off them and go to another character. I've done stuff like that, but never 13 minutes. Yeah, never 13 minutes, and also with... Um, 23 actors mm. two of them was children mm. um, I really like to shoot one feature movie mm. in same language like using master shot technique again mm. I want to do this that's an insane challenge yeah to do a feature <laughs> film as a continuous shot it has been done it's been done before um, 
But um, and I, I think those that have attempted it before don't necessarily do it in one continuous shot. They'll do it in several continuous shots with a nice blending point. Um, I, I'd be hard pressed to think of an example. I've looked into this about a year ago, actually. Um, uh, extended films for continuous shots. But yeah, how amazing uh, to choreograph twenty three people. Yeah. Um, just in a normal production yeah, is um, difficult. Yes, it's difficult, but um, actors, performers, mm -hmm. dancers, singers was um, extremely professional mm -hmm. and uh, they did a good job, really. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you a question about it? Is, um, did you, how many takes did you do? Um, how many takes? More than 22. 22 takes? Yeah, because I, um, I'm i not good about numbers. Mm -hmm. I already told this before <laughs> with other interviews mm -hmm. and blah, blah, but more than 22s. Okay. Yeah. And do you know what number you took? Which one Which one was the baby? <laughs> before the last one, I think. <laughs> Very, the second last? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would have been worth it. Um, it but uh, when you get um, to put it, and obviously you've put it across um, to multiple film festivals, um, and did the actors get to see their uh, work up on the screen? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's that's one of the, that's a fantastic reward to give somebody. Yeah, they were also excited to see themselves on the screen mm -hmm. on one master shot, and yeah, they see and me, me, I also see. <laughs> now everybody can see on YouTube. Mm. Yeah, I think. Oh wow, what an amazing feat! Um, but I think yeah, you're very um, yeah, you're very proactive filmmaker. Um, I was looking through your um, Vimeo uh, account. And it was just, it's one of the best Vimeo accounts I've looked at. It's oh, just so well put together and such variety, um, uh, documentaries, dramas. Um, yeah. Uh, what was one of the ones that you made? It wasn't recent, I don't think. It was The Egg. The that egg. was that was for the um, the art laboratory, was it not? Or um, Art laboratory is a kind of um, combination of my production works. Mm -hmm. It is the first um, step. Uh, to grow up, mm -hmm. then it um, continue with uh, film productions, mm -hmm. Peacock film productions. Mm -hmm. So um, the egg was before Peacock film, mm -hmm. 2016. Mm -hmm. It's made in Poland, and it was also experimental, poetic movie. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the people can see also this on Vimeo or YouTube. <laughs> yeah, guys, go and check out um, uh, Peacock Productions on Vimeo and on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I really don't like to talk about the uh, movies that I shoot. Like, mm. what is it or what the character are telling uh, the audience. Oh, I'm, I'm, what, but I'm more interested in the experience that you had. Yeah, yeah. Um, making it and your and your reasons for doing it. Um, you know, why why choose out of all the filmmaking um, uh, challenges you could pick? Why pick the continuous shot? Why do this experimental film? Yeah, I, I tell you why. Not all, all the reasons, but several but, reasons hmm. maybe. <laughs> because um, I like to write poem uh -huh. and um, Poem is like a real life. Uh, so when you uh, when you write the poem, mm -hmm. it, you need to read the poem from the beginning till the end in one one time. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can't sort of sample a poem. You've got to take it all in. Yeah, you can't uh, stop and continue uh, while reading poem. Mm. This is what I am telling. Mm. A movie is the same. Because uh, if you stop the movie, what will happen? Your world will be changed. Mm. Because you are going to this imagination mm -hmm. in one or two hours, um, as the director wants you to be in. Mm -hmm. So the poem is uh, like that. Mm -hmm. When you read it, uh, you don't stop. Mm -hmm. You read till the end. Mm -hmm. And the movie is uh, the same, like you read, uh, you watch till the end yeah you can stop the movie you can continue to do different things mm -hmm. but if you are a serious watcher mm -hmm. movie lover you get the things serious when you watch movie mm. so when you read poem um, it is the same you need to go into this poem and feel the words mm. and when you watch movie you need to go into the movie feel the screens and feel the characters mm. 
then you can understand what the director or producer telling you yeah, about you, the story. Yeah, because you keep that momentum. Yes. Otherwise, you'll lose that momentum yeah. and change your state of mind. It's like, um, think about theater. Mm -hmm. You are on the stage. And if you are an actor, I don't know, you, have you ever been on stage before? No, not on a... Um, well, only as a, only as a, um, a singer. Yeah, not, as a singer yeah. is a nice um, example as mm -hmm. well, because it is a stage. Mm -hmm. So when you are on the stage, when you look at the audience, it looks like they are uh, not there. Mm -hmm. There is no one. Mm -hmm. It's only you. That's very true, yeah. Yeah. And there is only darkness. It's like a loneliness. Yeah, um, well, you're normally covered in light, so yes. you can't actually see who's out you there. You can't see, yeah. but when you are there doing your art, making mm. your art or doing your performance as a mm. singer, actor, um, you are doing, like, you are in a kind of paradox. It's totally a paradox because yes. <laughs> you're self-serving, you're, you're doing it for yourself, but you're doing it for other people. Yes. Yeah. And you need to keep the things, the all feelings, all mm. the stories to yourself. Mm -hmm. Then you can uh, provide all the things in story to mm. the audience. Mm. So you need to be in this paradox, mm. like going down or going up. So um, watching a movie, you need to be serious. Mm. So uh, you need to be like you are an actor on the stage. Mm giving your um, feelings to your audience. Mm -hmm. But as a watcher or as an audience, if you are not serious as a, as a actor, mm -hmm. uh, you can't understand or you cannot find the point. Yeah, without that, removing that pressure of stop, you know, having that, yeah. yeah, you're talking about like putting pressure on someone to go, well, you have to do it start to end, and that will bring this momentum and this energy with it. Yeah, this is energy, it's not a pressure, like, mm. this is just the energy. If you mm. want to understand what is really on that screen, mm. or what is the uh, main topic of the story, if you really want to have this experience, mm. putting yourself as a the, as the character of the story, mm -hmm. you need to be serious. Mm. As the people was serious while making this art projects, yeah. which is movie, theater, performance. This is what I think. Mm. So you've just blown my mind. I totally agree. Yeah, I just yeah, I've always thought this, but you've just vocalized how I feel. It's amazing. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> No, sorry. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, yeah. Well, you were talking before about um, yeah, amazing. Um, you were talking before about um, writing Peacock, for instance, and just on, and just on this, um, you you were talking about writing Peacock and your experience where um, you know you've written this thing, you've produced this thing, you've directed this thing, and then years later, afterwards, you can see more parts of yourself. Yeah. And I just find it interesting to. When you have an idea, where does it come from? Obviously, it comes from this subconscious layer within you. Do you, do you feel that? Uh, yes, yeah, similar. Mm -hmm. Because I don't uh, force myself to write the, uh, the things. Mm -hmm. Never. It's truly coming to me. It's just um, personal. Mm. And this personal idea becoming universal. Mm. Because you are an artist. It's, uh, you can't keep this personal idea only for you. Mm. It's make you annoying. Mm. You have to throw this idea or feelings or the story because you see a reality. Mm. And this reality becoming your part. Mm. What do you have to do? You have to share. Yeah. Then you can be free. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's like, uh, I, I just want to tell that. Sure, sure. Because I was talking about uh, writing a poem. Mm -hmm. Then I was talking about making a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, for the continuous shot. Yeah, for yeah, the yeah. continuous shot. But uh, most of my movie uh, was a poem in mm -hmm. the beginning. This is what I want to tell. Mm. Uh, I on, uh, First, I wrote as a poem. Mm -hmm. I don't think it will be a movie. In the future, mm. but when I go back to the poem, I see the movie, mm. you know, or I see the performance, or uh, a theater, or a dance. Mm -hmm. So they become a movie because I want to, uh, I want to change them. Mm. I want maybe I I want to, 
I, I just want to uh, make the the poems into movie mm -hmm. and using my ability experience. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a, yeah. How cool. Um, wow. Uh, I, I dig what you're saying though about having an idea and sharing it. Yeah. Um, because it is personal. Um, even when I like, because I go through a um quite a meticulous process when I write a story. Um, I won't start typing straight away. I'll get cue cards and I write little um, ideas on cards and I stick them on a wall and then I put them so they make sense in a narrative arc mm -hmm. and then I have a character list and then I build those characters and what what makes them tick so then I can give those references to an actor. Okay, this is what this person thinks. This yeah. is how they think. Give them some leverage on the idea and then they can express how they want from that point. And I only start populating the... The dialogue after that process and the way you talk about how just let it come just let it i have this experience where i let it leave my hands and once it leaves my hands that splinter in my mind is being taken out yeah and i i really resonate with that idea i think that's a really and ironically i think it's a real poetic way of um of, of saying that. Yeah. Um, I think it's an important thing as a, a storyteller and as someone who gets, um, that needs to tell stories. Because I, like, I think I was going, I'll go back to what I was saying before about how you can learn how to use a camera. You can learn how to take a photograph. But the journey is learning how to tell a story. I find that is the journey. And then you've got to start questioning why. Why do I want to tell these stories? Yeah. Why is it important to me? And I think that paradox of that performer is really relevant. Um, there, there is a part of being selfish of telling a story because you go, well, I need to tell this story. Yeah. <laughs> but the objective of it is to entertain people, which is, a not, which is selfless. And it's a selfless act. So there's these two acts that one is selfless and one is selfish. And I find that paradox um, often when yeah, I'm writing. But when you make the project universal, mm. um, it is not selfish or selfness anymore. Mm. It's becoming something else. Mm. It is a universal. Mm. It is universe project that everybody can touch, everybody can... Can access and look at. Yes. Yeah. Then this makes you free. This mm. is what I, I am telling that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. What an outlook. You have totally <laughs> blown my mind. Thank you. <laughs> Good grief. Oh, yeah. I've lost my um, screen behind me. It's just blue. Normally, I have a hypnotic screen over there. Oh, yeah. I, I was, yeah, yeah. Was it hypnotic before? Yeah, but then it's blue now. <laughs> now it's just blue. Um, the computer's clearly shut down and it's had enough. It may have crashed. I've run it to death, that poor thing. That computer was actually part of, um, you, know, you know, Vivid in the city where they put um, projections on buildings? Yeah, I saw that. Um, they were selling their older computers from Vivid Projectors mm -hmm. and I got like a little mini Mac for half price. Oh, nice. <laughs> and I run it here and I run it constantly. I'm terrible. I've always got movies going or something. Always got something going. Um, yeah, so do you have any new projects uh, in the pipeline coming up? Yes. Or I, yeah, uh, I was waiting for that. <laughs> uh, for about one and a half years, I am here in Sydney. Mm -hmm. um, firstly, I was... a uh, kind of observer I observe everything mm -hmm. because I was new and um, to, to make a project I I need to know what is here mm. what is going on in that land you know mm -hmm. then um, after one and a half year I say okay this is the time uh, I'm going to make a documentary film project here in uh, Australia mm -hmm. It will be about uh, the people who migrate from other countries to mm. Australia. And I will uh, tell about a brief history of Australia. Mm -hmm. Then the people uh, who migrate here for a reason or for 
<laughs> no reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, something, yeah, something that know, has some gravity or just yeah, cause. Yeah, yeah I, I get what you mean. Yeah, and um, yeah, I'm gonna make this uh, documentary film. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know uh, when it will be realized, but it's a, it's a long process actually making mm -hmm. a documentary film totally. because you are just collecting the document. Mm -hmm. You are meeting with people who mm -hmm. who you want to have an interview mm -hmm. and also you are choosing the part that you want to show uh, a part of historical um, historical scenes mm -hmm. for the m movie mm -hmm. so it's a long process I will see when it will be end mm -hmm. after it start yeah. <laughs> Well, I find there's a bit of a bridge actually between because I've made a, um, a couple of little documentaries and I made a, a couple of little genre films, and um, one of, one of the main things that I do as a business is I do um, events. Mm -hmm. uh, so I go and film an event, and there's always this documentary esque um, feeling to shooting an event. Um, you, you've actually shot a couple of events recently, haven't you? There was um, the the Arc Festival. No, was it the Arc Festival? Uh. No, it wasn't the Arc Festival. It was in, in English or Turkish? I think it was in uh, Turkish, actually. Turkish. Oh, yeah. So maybe uh, <laughs> you need to show me. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I've just researched it wrong. It's terrible. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, um, you, you've done, you, you filmed a few events, though, for as, as part of your business, yeah? Um, you are talking about documentary film or... Uh, no, just doing promos, um, uh, doing promotions for uh, events. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if the customers mm -hmm. want to promote their event, mm -hmm. I do. I do, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, I do a lot of that as well. Yeah. And I just, um, I, I guess my question that, that, that's embedded in, in between those two points is um, do you see um, a, a relationship between making documentaries and doing events? Because mm -hmm. events, you go around, you interview people, you go, hey, how's your day going? Yeah. Um, and you're documenting. Yes. Uh, the event but it's sort of more of a live feel like mm -hmm. when I do events it's more of a live feel so if I do a car show mm -hmm. you, you're talking to the, the, the people there then and now you might have a bit of history but essentially it's just about that one event but when I do um, your documentaries they're a bit more in depth you're, you're yeah. tackling more subtext and you have to be more careful about the history mm -hmm. especially uh, because um, history is true mm -hmm. so you need to research more mm -hmm. uh, because you will use this uh, history mm -hmm. you will put uh, some screens on your movie mm -hmm. and the events are shortcut mm -hmm. you go there you interview with people it's a short story of these people but in documentary film you go more deep mm. with the people who are telling their story to um, to the people mm -hmm. yeah I will see yeah yeah so you're in pre-production at the moment do you have a working title what's your working title I'm in the pre-production process mm -hmm. and if anyone want to join me as a collaboration mm -hmm. um, they can contact me actually mm -hmm. because I need to learn more um, I'm still observing and researching mm -hmm. about some things in Australia mm -hmm. yeah and well, I think you'll do a really good job I think you um, yeah because um, you do shooting yourself um, you are writing and directing and I think some of your content is uh, pristine it is very well produced um, <laughs> and I think sorry to make you blush about it but I'm just telling you the truth I think it's just Thank you. I think it's very good I think um, especially just looking at because I look at a lot of Vimeo channels and I look at a lot of YouTube channels and um, I think your content is it's already at a at a, um, a very high standard and I think um, from there if you um, once you start making more films in Australia I think you will um, do very well because um, I think you already have that business mind uh, we're talking about, again uh, we're talking about it off air um, when you go to film school they make the filmmaker but they don't make the business person yes they don't yeah it's a problem big problem mm. because the production is very, one of most important uh, things that people need to learn Mm. And if you want to produce your movie, you need to be kind of business person. Mm. So no one can teach you how to become a business person. Mm. People here in Australia, um, I see 
many advertisement mm. on Facebook, Instagram, they are teaching how to become a business person mm. or how to become a rich. Mm. So sometimes um, it is funny for me. Mm-hmm. So you can't teach this. Yeah, yeah. It, it, but I think you, you can learn it though. <laughs> you can learn it by yourself. But, but you're so, by yourself, yeah. Yeah, but you don't need anyone to teach you how to become a business person. Yeah. It's all about uh, budget. Yeah. You know, if you have budget, you can be a business person mm. very well. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think I think when it comes down, to, well, personally, um, I think uh, shortening shortening your overhead without um, being too crazy. Um, and trying to make the most profit you can. Yeah. Well, that, that's how you want to approach it. But I find that the hardest thing in business and with commercial clients that I have is translating to them what the product will be. Because um, some people, when they go to buy an advertisement off you, if you're going to make an advertisement or a promotional bit of material, sometimes they don't understand what platform it's going to go to they don't really have in their mind yeah. what they want yeah <laughs> um you need to sort of figure out what yeah. they want and then articulate it for them and then keep their expectations real like some people they go just show up with an iphone and i want it to look like avatar you know it's just <laughs> yeah i understand <laughs> yeah it's not going to work that way i find that's the hardest thing uh with that but i think as well um I, I recommend for people to get into production to learn business because you will you will learn it. It's just it's part and parcel. If you're trying to sell images, mm-hmm. you're going to learn the business end of of, of um, film production. Yeah, you just will. It's also about uh, time and experience. Mm. And when you are ni- uh, 19 or 20s, first 20s, you don't have enough experience to do business. Mm. Uh, after you have enough experience. Um, you can do business better. Mm-hmm. It's all about experience and time. Mm. It's in my opinion. Yeah, I have to agree. Um, I was a, a musician before I was a filmmaker. And because, um, you know, you're, you're 19 years old. And you want to join a band because you're going to be in the best rock band that yeah. the earth <laughs> has ever seen at 19. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and sometimes, you know, you go out there and you realize, oh, wow, it's not just about being a musician. I've got to get to a gig. Yeah. So, how do you set up a gig? You've got to talk to a venue. You've got to um, promote your gig. You've got to pay your overheads. How are you getting your band to the gig? It's going to cost yeah. you petrol money. And you start, ke- and you know, and where do you rehearse? And how do you rehearse? How much do you invest in your instruments? There's this business side and and administrative side. Um, And I find there's a strong correlation between film and um, music. Um, These arts industries have... They're interchangeable in a lot of ways. From an administration point of view, Mm -hmm. scheduling. Like, if you can't run Excel, then you should learn. (laughs) Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... um, um, yeah, I, I think yeah, it's very important to learn uh, to learn business, but to the only way to learn it is to chuck yourself into it. Yes, of course. Mm. Yeah. Um, would you describe yourself that way? Are you just are, have you just dove off this uh, cliff of creativity and figured out how to do business along the way? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anymore, <laughs> it is like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I think. Um, no, but you certainly. Uh, again, though, come back to you. Certainly are doing uh, well with it. I, I think um, every time I, um, you know, uh, the old um, scroll through Facebook. You know, mm-hmm. when, you know, every, when you've got a, a minute where you're waiting for a bus, or well, not these days because we're all locked inside, but, yeah. you know, when we used to wait for buses or wait for public transport, you'd go through your phone. Um, every spare moment I sort of have, I go through my phone like most people and um, I'm always seeing you do something different. Like, the, I think we were talking about it before, you were photographing a dog with uh, glasses on this weekend. <laughs> the weekend before, you were doing a modelling shoot, I yeah, think. Tomorrow I'm going to do uh, another modelling shoot. Mm. I like a fashion shoot. Yeah, yeah? Yeah. Um, what, well, uh, what's the, is there a bit of a difference between the buzz and filmmaking and doing a model shoot? Because you do both of these things all the time. Yeah. Uh, when you say filmmaking, it is film or video? Oh yes, yeah, that's good. In- <laughs> yeah, that's an important distinction. <laughs> yeah, um, because video making is promotion. Yes, it's promotion. Yeah, filmmaking is that's your art. 
Yeah, I would like to make um, another movie very soon mm -hmm. in the near future after I realize this documentary movie, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, because it is my passion. It is where I need to be, mm. you know. Um, but here, I just act uh, as people, uh, people is uh, desire, like they come to me and they say, Gökçe, you have this ability, you have this experience and I need this video mm -hmm. to be done on that date. Mm -hmm. Can you help me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> If someone come to me, Gökçe, you have this ability, oh, you are a filmmaker and I like you to make this movie for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can. <laughs> <laughs> it does go a lot. It does go that way a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, it is like that now. Mm -hmm. And uh, tomorrow is a kind of uh, photo and video shoot, mm -hmm. uh, fashion, and then uh, other shoot is tomorrow, um, promotional video clip again. Mm -hmm. Kind of testimon testimonial, mm -hmm. how you say? Testimonial. Yeah, testimonials. That's testimonial right. Testimonial yeah. video clip. Um, Hi, I'm uh, I'm Ross from Still Searching Productions, and I think Ross does a superb job. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but yeah, that was my own personal testimonial for all, all you guys out there. <laughs> but you say like teaching is very good, very powerful. Mm, I agree. Totally, it's make you, um, it's keep you young. Yeah, it keeps you sharp. Yeah, young and powerful. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day uh, you can teach. How to broadcast, you know, mm -hmm. to people, maybe. Yeah. It's an, another idea. Yeah, uh, totally. Um, well, I, well, I've been a... <laughs> how many times have I... I've been in broadcast... I've been in the broadcast industry for about oh, 10 years. Very, very long yeah. time. Yeah. I, um, well, I used to control um, TV networks um, uh, as one of my jobs. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Channel 10. I'd control all the Channel 10 across Australia. Yeah. Like all of those transmissions. And they're all like itemized per region. So, you know, um, that's the way uh, I can... Uh, Ballarat versus, you know, um, uh, Shepparton, you know, all over, all over the place. Yeah. And you'd control... Essentially, Channel 10 is 200 channels. Like if you break up Channel Ten mm -hmm. and just Channel Ten, not like you know, you know that, that uh, Channel Eleven and you know all that other sort of business they have behind it, just the main channel, mm -hmm. the primary flagship channel, that would break up into two hundred pieces across Australia. Hmm. And as a broadcaster, you control that network, and it's very high, a high stress job. Yeah, I um, think so. Um, I think the most I've ever had at the end of my mouse was about a million people. So you've got a million people at the end of your mouse watching your content. Um, very um, strange feeling because you have a lot of power, but you've got to make sure that it's accurate, prestigious, um, mm -hmm. to the letter, to the frame work that's done live. So, you know, when um, people watch the football, you'll see, a, a you know, someone score a goal and they roll to a commercial. Mm -hmm. I used to be the guy that roll that commercial. You just go to commercial on, on live TV. Uh, at other levels, I've done um, like um, Television Sydney, which is community TV, which I really miss. I really miss that industry. Yeah, that, that industry sort of went belly up um, in the last few years. But, um, yeah, now into podcasting, um, I'm really enjoying it. I get to talk to fabulous people and learn so much. Really? Um, yeah, I think, I think uh, what you, you're blowing my mind today, especially talking about paradoxes because um, this is how I felt for a while. I think um, even talking to my wife about it, she, she, she was like, just stop banging on about paradoxes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't wait to tell her actually about really? this episode already. Yeah, I'm so happy that. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and I think it's a comforting thing uh, doing, um, doing shows like this. Um, I find it um, important and mm -hmm. I think I can get, um, and as well, the bonus out of it, because again, it's, for me doing the podcast is a paradox. Selfishly, I want to become a better speaker and a better listener, <laughs> and out of that, I get to promote artists. You know, so that's the paradox to me. Yeah. That's the selfish and selflessness. But like you say, you've added another piece to the puzzle to, for me today. Once those two things intersect, it's now universal. Yes, it's beyond your control. Of course, it is. It, it is now left your hands. Um, I, I can't remember who it was, but they call. I, I've been suffering it a lot. And it's called death of the author. As soon as you publish, you're dead. It's over. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's some somehow. Yes, it's over. Mm -hmm. But 
the other things start soon. Mm. They do. Never give up. Okay, you did some things. Mm -hmm. It's over. Mm -hmm. You have to accept that. But then you have to accept to continue. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, during a production, I think this came up a couple of podcasts ago, during production, right around your last days of filming, you will be probably really stressed out because you've, you know, you've rescheduled things, actors haven't shown up on time, you've got them to show up on time, you've done this choreography auditioning process to get everyone to do the right thing for the correct minute while on film. Yeah. That's a stressful. That can be a stressful process, but it's a buzz. It's for me. Um, I think you you, you um, brought it up earlier. The contrast between photography and doing film. Film is full of adrenaline. It's way more intense than just taking a photograph. Photograph. Yeah, it, you know, being a photographer is fun, but doing film. That's like you know the Formula One versus the go kart. That is a challenge. It's a big challenge. Making a movie. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Producing a movie and then uh, put it on screen mm. is also a challenge in that. Oh, time. distribution. Yeah, you've yeah, made it. Now you got to sell it. In that time, <laughs> it's very, very big challenge. <laughs> um, but that's well, well, that's why you know a big plug for Made in the West. That's why I like to get people's um, content with a DCP digital cinema package. Uh, on a screen that's four stories high where they get to see their content. And the reward for me is then looking at these filmmakers, they're going, holy shit, my film's up on this big screen. Very nice feeling. <laughs> it's a very nice feeling. Um, and, it, and there's bums on seats watching it, you know. Yeah. Um, getting those bums on seats is it's fantastic. Um, I remember um, one of my film screenings, one of my first film screenings, I had 300 people watching my film in a cinema. And I'll never, ever... Forget that feeling. Very nice feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what a great feeling. I can't even put words to it because you're like, well, this is my work and and it's up there and then people are enjoying it as well. Like, it, it's not just your friends and family. It's your... The other people. It's the other people, the extended audience. Then they ask you some question and they just um, uh, think how you think, you know. Mm -hmm. They just try to figure out the view that you r create for them mm -hmm. it's really uh, good because after you realize if you don't share mm. it is nothing mm. even you have very very big project but you didn't publish it you mm. didn't find a way to publish mm. who will know it is exist yeah it's yeah. always hidden i think it's a big problem with filmmakers i, I, I talk to a lot of filmmakers and uh, more often than not, I will talk to them and they will tell me, you know, I've made 10 projects, but I've only released three. Mm -hmm. And then you think, why didn't you release the other seven? That would boil me. I need to distribute my film. I yeah. need Once I've made it, I need to distribute it. And it comes back to what I was talking about before. Like, you go through all this pressure of making a production and then you get to the last day and you're like, I can't do this ever again. This is so hard. <laughs> and then once you've wrapped, you go... So what's my next project? Yeah. <laughs> You'll go straight to that straight away. You'll go from this high intense, oh God, I can't do this anymore to, all right, well, I better get back writing and I better get another project going. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah it happens every time. Uh, but I do recommend, guys, get out there and make some films. Like, all you got to do is write it down. Um, and there's plenty of knowledge out there how to learn how to do film. Yeah. Um, absolutely. There's, um, and we're talking about it before. Um, you know, doing workshops, um, being a part of things like the. Um, oh, sorry, I've lost the name of it. The art laboratory. Art laboratory yes. I think that's great. I think that's absolutely fantastic to run um, workshops around the world, teaching and inspiring people. Yeah. Um, but I think, um, look, that's all we've got time for today. We're about. To, oh, my camera's about to go, so I've got to wrap it up really quickly. Um, so, um, wait, uh, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, and, and where could people find you again at Peacock Productions YouTube? Yeah, Peacock Film. Pro Productions mm -hmm. um, on YouTube, Instagram, yeah. And uh, Vimeo. Vimeo, of course. Yeah, check out the Vimeo channel. I, I will upload my Vimeo channel. I haven't looked at the uh, oh, well, <laughs> long time. But something that hasn't been updated is pretty good. I will update <laughs> <laughs> And But as well, guys, um, while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to the Page of Train and go across to Facebook and tick like. You have been aboard the Page of Train and we'll see you next time. All right, that's it. Thank got, you. The show is done. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show today. What a great Thank show. Thank you. Yeah, I like it very much. 